All right, let's talk a little bit about the, uh, the midterm exam. Okay, I'm still in the process of writing the midterm exam. Okay, it's going to be ab about, so don't hold me to this, about 50 questions. Okay, it's going to be uh, written for 2 hours and 45 minutes. Okay. And that just gives me time to uh, pass them out and collect them, OK? Uh, it's going to be all multiple choice. Okay. And this week, I will not post a practice midterm, but I will post practice questions from the chapter I covered today, right? So, wait, okay, Let, just before you ask, ask all these questions, okay? So, so far on the site, okay, you have three practice quizzes, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so this week, I will post a practice quiz that I wanted to get before today, but I didn't. Okay, so I will post um, practice quiz for chapter, five. for chapter five, and I will also post practice questions for chapter six. Okay, so you will have practice for basically all the chapters that I've covered, OK? And between all of these practice questions, I would say this will make up about 80% of the midterm exam. OK? So the last 20% will be material from the chapters that were not part of the practice quizzes or practice questions, OK? I believe, I feel like my lectures, the material in the lectures overlaps very heavily with the material in the book, OK? So, um, so basically, if I've covered it in lecture, it should also have been covered in the book. And any, anything that's covered in the lecture is fair game, OK? So the last 20%, hang on, um, will be other material that has been covered uh, but not necessarily in the quizzes, OK? Like standard deviation So the standard deviation was covered in on the quiz, but I, you know, it might be a little bit more terminology slash conceptual type things. For example, I might say, um, you know, which of the following does not measure spread? And I'll list off things like the range, the variation, uh, Q1, the IQR, and the standard deviation. And you would tell me which of the following does not measure spread. And your choices are the range, variation, Q1, IQR, and standard deviation. And your answer is Q1. Q1 does not measure spread. It lo it's the location of the 25th percentile. OK? So just questions like that. I, th I think that's a fair question. Um, you know, it's not necessarily from the quiz or things like that, but it's material we've definitely covered. So, so you can expect you know, about 80% to come <clears throat> to be very similar to the quizzes. Of course, not exactly the same, but similar. 
and then uh, 20% uh, just to be uh, a little bit different uh, and things like that. Okay? Yes? Do you think you could go over question number nine on today's quiz? Because I feel like it was tricky for a lot of people. Question? Sure. I will, I will take a look at question number nine on the quiz. No, thank you. Okay. Uh, yes? I have a question about what you put on the board here. Yes. No, no, I'm sorry. Um, between 80% uh, of the midterm exam uh, has been covered in the practice quizzes, okay? So uh, practice quizzes for chapters um, 1... Th yeah, so you'll have five practice quizzes, and between those five practice quizzes and practice questions, you'll have about 80% of the midterm exam, okay? Yeah, that would be a lot of emphasis on chapters 5 and 6 if that was 80% of the exam, okay? All right. Any other questions regarding, uh, yes, next week? Oh, oh yes, you will get uh, one note sheet, okay? One, one sheet of notes. Does that mean like an 8.5 by 11 paper? Or like a little yes, 8.5 uh, by 11. Uh, Uh, yeah, let me, sorry, I'm, I'm just sorting through all of this information. Yes, so, um, okay, you are, you are allowed, just, it's like, uh, no, 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 just overload, right? Okay, okay, so you, you, see, I can't even, you are allowed, I can't even write, okay, allowed one note sheet. Okay, 8.5 by 11, okay, writing on one side. All right, and um, <clears throat> handwritten, no photocopies. Uh, I'm, I'm changing it just because I have practice quizzes, and I don't want you guys to just photocopy the practice quizzes onto your note sheet, okay? That's, that defeats the purpose. So, um, so yes, hand, handwritten and, and uh, you know, you guys, everybody gets upset when you change rules and things like that. But just because, because things have changed and I'm posting practice quizzes and practice questions, I don't want you guys to just essentially shrink down the practice quiz into like a quarter sheet of paper and then and then just have you know eight little practice quizzes you know on, on the different sides of the uh, on the thing okay now if you handwrite all the practice quiz questions that's fine I guess I, I mean I can't stop you guys um, I'm allowing you a, a sheet of notes so don't Uh, no, just writing one side, okay? Wah, 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 okay? Um, <clears throat> I, in terms, okay, so so far on your four quizzes, you've only been allowed a note card on one of the quizzes, okay? And I think that was, that was fair, and I think so far the, the quizzes have not required so much that you needed a note card for every single quiz. And so I think allowing one sheet where you have to do a little bit of planning and a little bit of studying, which I think is reasonable for a course, you know, you have to, you have to just say, what can I learn and be confident about that I don't need to put it on this note sheet? And what do I need to write down? So if you want to write down the formula or the steps to find the standard deviation, which is probably a good idea, include that in your note sheet. But I, again, I, I don't want it to become a crutch where you're just copying the entire, all the different practice quizzes onto a sheet of paper and, and relying on that, okay? I, I want you guys to do a little bit of thinking. So, so I'm sorry I'm changing the rules that makes your life just a little bit harder. Um, but 
but you will have this, okay? And I'm going to post these practice quiz, quiz questions um, to help you guys study as well. All right? Is that a okay? Yes. Question back there. Can you post them like soon? Post them soon. I, I will. I will do my very best. Okay. Uh, all right. We'll. I will. I will make a goal for myself. Okay. Not the day before. Okay, so I will try to get both this and this. Uh, I will say Thursday. I will give myself till Thursday, 11:59 p.m. Okay, how's that? <laughs> so you will have all day Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday up to 6:59 to study from this. Okay, so this will be uh, just my my goal here. Okay. So I, 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 will, I will do my part to help you guys be prepared, and, uh, and please do your part in studying and preparing for the, uh, for the exam. Okay? Sorry, I, I started a, another class, so it's just, this week was, this week was, was a little rough for me, okay? So I, I, I recognize that I fell behind. All right, we had a request for going over question nine from the quiz. So let's take a look at question nine from the quiz. Okay, so it says, uh, let's say, all right, so I'm just gonna change this number a little bit, okay. Let's say the probability of winning a random game of chance uh, and let's say 0 0.41, okay? And we're going to say you play three independent games. What is the probability of winning at least one? Is that okay? Okay. So winning at least one game is the complement of what? Yeah, so yeah, winning at least one is equal to the complement of losing all three games. Okay? So the probability of win at least one is equal to one minus the probability of losing all three. Everybody okay so far? Yes? And, it, and you guys are just kicking yourselves for forgetting this relationship. Okay, so uh, one of the other questions on the quiz was what's the probability of losing all three? But in this case, it would be the probability of losing all three is equal to 1 minus 0.41 raised to the third power. So you have 1 minus... 0.59 to the third power, and we will do that right here. 1 minus 0.59 to the third power. 0 0.794621. <coughs> Is that good with everyone? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So I hope that is okay.
Yes. Complement of losing all three? Okay. Um, so I, I, I covered this, and I, I thought I covered it well last week, but maybe not. Um, winning, so if you think about it, okay, if you play, let's say you play um, three, three basketball games, okay? You're either going to win at least one, or you get swept, right? If you're playing three games, you're either going to... Those are the only two possibilities. You're either going to win at least one game, and what is... If that doesn't happen, that means what happened? It means you lost all three. You got swept. Okay? So, um, so that's how we know that because those are the only two possibilities in the entire world, those two have to add to one, meaning they are complements of each other. So losing all three is the complement of winning at least one, or we could say winning at least one is the complement of losing all three. Okay? All right, and I, and I apologize if, if you feel like I did not cover that well enough in uh, last week's lecture and homework. So. But does it count? Yeah, it's number one. It counts. I, I, I promise you there there will be at least uh, at least twenty percent of the the class um, got that question correct, huh? If it's less than twenty, if it's less than twenty, um, I'll I'll consider uh, consider dropping that question. But I, I I promise at least at least twenty percent. Okay. You should not hope for the other students to be doing poorly at this time, okay? <laughs> you should be asking yourself, why did I not remember this, okay? Okay, so do you guys have your textbooks with you today? Yes, yes. okay. And if not, um, that's okay. I've got um, a copy of the reference table on uh, on the computer screen <clears throat> but today we are covering chapter six and this requires um, the use of some reference tables okay so we're going to learn the normal distribution and binomial distribution I will uh, mention that in a second. OK, so in the back of your textbook, there is some reference tables on page A2. OK, it's so actually, I'm just uh, going to go half screen here. You guys still see? And we're going to uh, zoom in here. Okay, so this is page A2 in the, uh, the back of your textbook. Page A2 and A3, these are reference tables. And specifically, this is the normal probability table. also known as the Z table. Okay. So next week is the midterm exam. I will provide you copies of the reference tables as part of your midterm exam because you will need them. And then the following week, I will provide you hard copies for you to keep. Okay. So, so don't lose those. OK. There are two pages in your textbook. Okay. Page A3 and A4 make up table two. <clears throat> so let's, let's start um, over here, OK? What's that? A2 and A3. What did I say? A3 and A4. OK, I meant A2 and A3. Yes. Is it the same pages in both? Yeah, same pages in both the uh, first and second edition, OK? Can you guys see this? I know it's small, OK? so. 
Either you can turn there in your textbook right now, or you can look at the screen. Okay. All right, what this is, first off, with our Z table, it is important to know that we can represent um, any number between uh, negative 3.49 and 3 point, positive 3.49. Okay, so we can represent numbers uh, from, and I'm going to say z equal to negative 3.49 to z equal to positive 3.49. And the table only goes um, up to two decimals of precision for z. OK, so meaning uh, we can have z equal to 0 0.01 and z equal to 0 0.02, but, but not z equal to point zero point zero one five. Okay, so because this has three decimals. So this is okay. And that's okay, but uh, we do not have this. This is not in our table. Okay. Is that okay with everyone? All right, and so we just have to get used to um, looking up different numbers using two columns in our table, OK? So let's say I have z equal to 1.23, 1.23. I'm going to look this up using a row and a column. OK, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the first two digits, and this will give me the row. And I look at the last digit, and this is the column. So my row is 1.2, and my column is 0 0.03. Because when I put 1.2 and 0 0.03 together, I get 1.23. OK? So z equal to 1.23 corresponds to the value 0 0.8907, OK? Gives me the value 0 0.8907. Is that OK? OK? All right, so just tell me. Uh, well, don't shout it out. Just see if you can find this. Tell me what value corresponds corresponds to what value. Don't shout it out, but look it up. Okay, you might have to squint your eyes or look in your own personal table. 1.06. Okay, so I go to what row? The row is 1.0, and the column is 0 0.06. So I go to the row 1.0 and the column 0 0.06, and I find 0 0.8554. 1.0, column 0 0.06, 0 0.8554. Is that OK? I know those of you in the back, it's tiny, so I hope you either have a reference table that you can look at, or you can, you know, squint your eyes. Maybe you can use your phone and zoom in on your phone. <laughs> if you ever lose your glasses, this is a pro tip, life pro tip. You lose your glasses, you can't look, you know, if you have terrible vision like I do, and, you know, they're somewhere on the floor and you can't really find them, you can take your phone and it'll have better vision than you, and you hold it up close to your face. And you can look around, OK? It's a little disorienting at first, but you can, you can navigate the room and everything by holding the phone right up to your face where it's, where it's in focus. Try it out before you laugh at me. <laughs> Too late for that, OK. All right, is that OK? 
<clears throat> okay, and then if you have a negative number, you just go to the other table, and let's just make sure we can do this. Um, so if z is equal to negative 1.8, 8, 0, this corresponds to what value? Point zero three five nine. Okay, I think you guys got the hang of it. Okay, so what do these values represent? Okay, all right, so these values, these are areas. Okay, these correspond to probabilities or areas. So you look up a Z and the table gives you um, an area, okay? So look up Z, the table gives you an area. And specifically, it's the area to the left of Z. What do I mean that by that? Imagine we've got this um, picture here, OK? If we paint the entire thing, the total area, if I paint this entire thing, the total area of this thing is equal to 1, OK? Right here, in the very middle, is z equal to 0? Okay. So if I paint, if I paint just to the left of 0, if I paint over here, how much have I painted? Okay. So this shaded area the, to the left of 0, is equal to what? 0 0.5. 0 0.5, right? And if we look up z equal to 0, 0.00, so essentially 0, 0.00, when you look up z equal to 0, 0.00, the shaded area, the table says 0. 0.500, OK? 0. 0.5000, OK? And that's, that's what it's corresponding to. The entire area, OK, total area under the curve, total area under everything is always equal to 1, 1 1.0. OK, so if I draw a line at 0, which is exactly in the middle, and I shade everything to the left, my shaded area is 0.5. <coughs> and that's what we have here. OK, so let me just copy this. So let's um, let's say I draw a line not at 1.0, but let's say I go. Oops. To 1.0, okay. And so now I'm going to shade everything to the left of 1.0. So that includes from here all the way to the end. About, we don't, OK, without looking at the table, we don't know the answer. But we do know that this number, that the shaded area has to be more than what? It has to be more than 50%, right? Because everything to the left of 0 is 50%. Here, I'm shading a lot more. So we do know that it has to be more than 50%. And so the total shaded area, I look up in the table, and I look up 1.00, and it says the total shaded area is now 0.8413. Okay, So I look up 
z equal to 1.00, and the area to the left is equal to 0.8413. Area to the left of 1.00. So if the area to the left is 0.8413, what would happen? Let's say, uh, let me just get the, uh, let's say a shade over here. How much? is shaded in pink or purple or what? what is that, fuchsia? How much is shaded to the right? OK. Well, we know the area to the left is 0 0.8413, <coughs> and everything has to add up to 1. So these are essentially complements, right? So we have 0 0.8413 plus you know, the area to the right. equals 1. So I do 1 minus 0.8413, and I get the area to the right is equal to 1 minus 0.8413, and I get 0.1587. OK, so the area over here. Yes, we have a question. If, if we shade everything, yeah. the total area is 1. Okay, So the green and the pink add up to 1. OK? Yes? Why isn't it uh, 0 .34, or 3.49 to the right and then negative 3.49 to the left? Like, why is it 1 instead of that? I guess what I'm saying is, why isn't uh, why is the total area only one instead of uh, three point four nine? Where, where are you getting three point? Well, because you said that the z oh the z goes from okay. Yeah. So technically, the z actually goes from negative infinity to positive infinity, but we have just values from three point four nine. So the the area, the total area is one. It is not, it has nothing, I wouldn't say nothing, but it is not, de, it is not 3.49, okay? Uh, it's not negative 3.49, it's, the total area is 1, okay? So, um, yeah, I, I, I can't, I can't explain that portion any, any other way, okay? It's, Yes, the, the entire area represents 100%, OK? Or a proportion of 1. Um, so we're not, 3.49 would represent 349% or something, and, and it okay. doesn't work that way, OK? Yeah. However, we can draw lines out at 2. We can draw lines out at 3 and things like that, OK? So let me, um, let me draw, you know. So right in the middle, again, is 0. Listen up, you guys. <clears throat> so and if I go out here, maybe it's at 1. And if I go the same distance that way, I'm out at 2. And if I go out all the way over here, I'm at 3, OK? So let's say I shade everything to the left of 3. How much have I shaded in? Approximately. Just give me a percentage. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna have shaded in quite a lot, right? Like almost a hundred percent. Maybe just a tiny bit is not shaded, right? So how much? Is shaded to the left of three. 
z equal 3. All right. So before I even look at the table, I know the area, the area shaded is something like 99%. Right? Assuming my picture is somewhat accurate. OK. It looks like almost the entire thing is filled. Only just a tiny little sliver is not shaded in. OK. And indeed, if I go to the reference table and I look up 3.0, the amount shaded to the left, OK, so now we go to the table, look up z equal to 3.00 in the table. The area to the left is equal to 0.9987. Okay, so very close to 100 percent. Is that okay? All right. So then, just maybe just a quick check here. Let's say I've got another one of these hills, just a, a smaller version. And let's say I go out to negative 3, and I shade everything to the left of negative 3. How much have I shaded in now? Don't you go 1 minus one? Yeah, so how much, is, how much shaded here? Just a tiny bit, right? Shaded to the left of negative 3. The thing is symmetric. So actually, I could look it up in the table, but we know it's just going to be 1 minus 0.9987, right? Because the area to the right of positive 3 is going to be the same thing as the area to the left of negative 3. Can we see that? So I could look up negative 3, and we see that the answer is 0 0.0013. So how much is shaded? The area to the left of negative 3 is equal to 0 0.0013, OK? Or we could have also done 1 minus 0.9987 to arrive at that answer. OK, so I'm going to just give you a few drills here. And who, who has their textbooks with them and can look up things? OK, who doesn't? OK, so a lot of you. Can you guys see this screen OK? Kind of? If you squint? What if I zoom in just a tiny bit? Is that visible? OK, so let me do this. OK, so I'll make sure all of my numbers come from this visible portion here. I'm going to draw different pictures here. And I'm going to ask you to find the shaded area. Okay. <coughs> Go back. Okay. All right, is that okay? So I'm going to just copy these, and uh, I'll give you four of these things. I'm going to ask, how much is the shaded area?
Okay, so for each of these things, I hope you guys can read. Uh, read these things. This is 1.04. I'll, I'll make sure this is printed nice and clearly. Okay, so for each of these, find the shaded area. So I'll give you guys a couple minutes. Uh, the reference values are on the uh, are on the screen as well. And then after we do this, we'll take a break. Uh, no, you, sh you should be able to do it without looking at the negative side of the table. How are you guys doing? Your answers? Okay, so I'm going to just start writing in numbers here. Making a mistake? What? The second one. Am I am I doing something wrong here? What are you guys getting for the second one? Okay, that, that is not correct. <clears throat> and the third one is, uh, I'll, I'll go over all of these, okay? So don't, don't get angry. <laughs> I'm just telling you what the answer is.
Okay. These are the answers. Okay. First one. Point seven one two three. Are there any questions about this? It says one negative one point two zero. Okay, negative one point two zero. Okay, listen up. Settle down, you guys. We're looking at the very first one. Z is equal to 0 0.56. So I go to the row 0 0.5 and the column 0 0.06, and the answer is 0 0.7123. Is that okay with everyone? It's very straightforward, right? Remember, the table always gives us the area to the left. Keep that in mind. OK, the second one, I'm looking up 1.04. Z is equal to 1.04. The table says, the table gives, the table gives 0 0.8508. But 0 0.8508 represents, uh, let's get this, and let's Color this in. 0 0.8508 is this area over here. Okay, that's what the table is giving us. So this side over here, the purple, purple is. I have, we have not agreed on what color this is, but I'm just going to say it's purple. Okay, the purple area is 0 0.8508, but that is not what I want. I want the green area. Okay. So we're going to ask, what is the green shaded area? That's going to be 1 minus 0 0.8508. And that gives me 0 0.1492. Same exact thing for this one, OK? When I look it up in the table, I look up 0 0.93 in the table, and the table gives me 0.8238, OK? So the purple area is 0.8238, OK? What we want is the green shaded area for all of these. The green shaded area is then going to be 1 minus 0.8238, and I get 0.1762. Is it always 1 minus? When is it 1 minus? It's not always. When is it? When we are looking for the area to the right of what the table gives us. Is that OK? OK, so the last one, maybe it deserves its own slide. But did anyone get 0.1151 from just looking at the positive side of the table? OK? All right, and we'll go over this. So is everything so far OK with this? OK, so let's look at this last one. And I think uh, maybe it deserves its own little slide here. Let's see, is there a, um, no, that's not what I want to do. I don't know how to image, oh, mirror, mirror layer. Uh, that's not what I want, ah, whatever, OK. So basically, if I look up positive 1.2 in the table, I get 0.8849. Okay. So the one quick way is I know the table always gives me the area to the left. And I could have gone to the negative side and looked up negative 1.20 and gotten 0.1151. Okay. But here I'm, I quote, crippling myself by just um, having only forcing me us to use only the positive side of the table. Okay, so the area to the left of positive 1.20 is 
4, 9. Okay, so if I were to draw this, that's a terrible, that's also, uh, whatever, okay? Life is hard, you guys. Um, so if I go over here to 0 and I draw 1.20 and I shade everything to the left of this, this is 0.8849, okay? So essentially, I could you know, mirror this. So imagine having a mirror because it's symmetric. And I'm getting essentially this picture right here. I probably should have picked uh, this color over here. Let's do that. Okay. So if I shade everything to the left of 1.20, essentially, I'm getting this picture up there. Can you guys see that? Okay. So basically, what the table tells me is that the area to the right of negative 1.20, the area to the right over here is 0.8849. So that means over here must be 1 minus 0.8849, and we get 0.1151. Okay? So the area over here is 0.1151 as well. So when do I do uh, minus subtract the area from 1? Okay. Well, if I'm looking up the value in the table, it's always going to be um, the table always gives us the area to the left. So if I want the area to the right, I can subtract from 1. Or in this last example, you can look up the negative version or the positive version of a number, even if you only have one side of the table because you know it's symmetric. Okay? If this last one was a little confusing, don't worry about it. But you've got to know at least you've got to understand comfortably these first three. Okay? If the last one was a little confusing, don't worry too much about it. Okay? But you've got to be comfortable with the first three. Okay, with that, let's take a 10-minute break and then we'll uh, we'll finish out the chat.